Hey guys, today we continue with adjusting valves. All right, so these are the specs. Intake valves, 0 0.0079, we just call it 8 thousandths, and then plus minus 16 thousandths, and then exhaust is 0 0.0098, let's call it 10. And then for exhaust, we got 0 0.0098, plus minus 0 0.0016. So in millimeters, it's uh, 0.2 and 0.25. So you're gonna need a 10 mil wrench, flat screwdriver, and a set of filler gauges. And here we're gonna be using, for the intake, seven, eight, and nine. Then for exhaust, 10, 11. So first, make sure you got oil in there. So we're gonna do the, let's do the exhaust first. So exhaust was 0 0.0098. Okay, so I'm gonna go with an even 10 and we'll make it a, a tight 10, okay? Make sure that's clean. All you're doing is, oh yeah, one other thing I should notice. I'm gonna install this sprocket in place, well, temporarily and make sure that we are loose on every single valve they all got to be closed no tension on them and it's got to be cold obviously this engine is cold so there we go this one moves but it's only the spring not moving the you, you will not be able to move the valve springs by rotating the sprocket so no no worries there so that's it, this is good. All right, so we start by sticking this 0 0.010 gauge between the exhaust uh, rocker and the valve, and there, it fits nicely. This one also fits. And actually move this a little bit so making sure it's back this seems to open it a little bit there that fits kind of tight and this is kind of loose okay so since the 10 gauge fit we're gonna go to 11 this does not fit Okay, it does. So this one needs adjustment. Well, plus or minus, or was it 0 0.0016? I could, we'll see if the 12 fits in this first one. But we will adjust it. See this one, it does not fit in here. The 10 was kinda, kinda hard to get in there. And saying, okay, this one fits. So this one I would not adjust. Since the 11 does not fit, but the 10 does. This one, I'm not gonna touch. But we will adjust on these remaining three. So let's just, for giggles, let's check if the 12 fits. Uh, it kinda wants to. No, skip this one, and no. Okay, so what you do, I'm gonna go back to 10, because that's where we want it. Right, remember this fit nicely on the 10, it's kinda tight. Okay, that's good. So, I'm gonna loosen up. All of them, I'll notice how this, this is your locking nut, and this is your adjusting screw. Notice how that's gonna move. Okay, actually it didn't. A lot of times it does when you're loosening it or tightening it. Oh. None of them did, okay, cool. Anyways, it didn't matter, just wanted to show you. Now, since these are loose, now I can turn this. 
Now this is going to be a very a small amount of adjusting. Make that fit. See it is kind of loose. And now it is not. So I'm going to make it tight. There, that's one. I'm kind of doing all of them at once. Just to show you how quickly you can do this. Make sure you're, you know, this is obviously, these are angled, you know, towards you. So make sure you're not checking it like this. Make sure it's flat as, as you're checking it. You know, by pushing it down right here with my index finger. There, and then the last one. Come on, get in there. And that's it. Now, you wanna Put your wrench, 10 mil wrench on, and then see I already moved it. Just remember the spot where it was and tighten it a little bit without moving the adjusting screw or bolt, whatever. Okay, now we're gonna check again. 10 fits, fits, and fits. Now back to 11. I suspect the 11 might fit on some of these. So first test. Nice, doesn't fit. Hmm, doesn't fit also, I was wrong. Last one. Nice, perfect, first time. Now, where's my torque wrench? These torque down to 7.2. But as you torque these down, there is a chance that the adjusting screw can move on you. Okay, so you just uh, check it again. Where's 10? So if you're tightening it, it could only make it tighter. So if my 10 fits, then we're good. It's not like a 11 will fit. You know what I mean? We're good. So if a 10 fits, 9 will fit, obviously. But uh, let's just for giggles, let's check the 11 again. No. This one we checked before, no. No. No, exhaust valve's done. What was it five, 10 minutes? I gotta say it's not as easy as, as, as this, you know, this time, but you get the idea. Sometimes it takes longer. So I'm just gonna do my intake side same procedure just a different gauge uh, now intake are a little bit looser or sorry tighter exhausts are looser because they heat up more there's more heat so they expand more that's why they're they're a little bit looser when cold intake will be i think we're going to be trying adjusting yeah so on the intake ones my eight filler gauge 0 0.008 will be my go-to gauge all right Okay, so I'm going to do the intake side. I'm going to install this spra uh, sprocket. And then we're, uh, I'm going to, obviously the valve cover, the valve cover torques down to, these bolts torque down to 4.7. I'm just going to do five on all of them. You can see I already did these, this uh, solenoid, the oil sending unit, that's all done. Uh, once the timing is um, done, I'm going to go on to the intake manifold. All right, see you later. All right, after you're done adjusting, spill some oil here and there on the moving parts. After that, I'm going to install these 
spark plug seals. These kind of make a noise once they're down all the way. And now the valve cover. Am I remembering everything? Springs are loaded, everything's torqued. Should be good. Guys, all right, so kind of I did adjust valves, but it was almost the right way. Now, I thought on many, many engines, you can actually, you know, remove the timing, make sure the, the sprockets are loose, and then all the valves close up. There's no tension on them at all, and then you can adjust valves. They're all, they, they all should be closed all the way for you to be able to adjust them you know the right way it wasn't that in this case there is still a tiny amount of tension i mean tiny on some of these valves so i got to thinking i should redo them you know what if so there are two ways Right now, I'm doing it this way with the dial gauge because I don't feel like taking the timing cover off and all that. But if you didn't put this on yet, you can just make sure, you know, put it at uh, TDC for, for number number one. Um, you know, like as you would uh, when putting on the, the timing belt. So all marks up and then number one is ready to adjust, meaning all the valves are fully closed. And let me show you something. This is what I did without taking the cover. This is the, another way. You can just get a dial gauge. Hopefully you can see the dial gauge. So I got an extension, dropped, removed the spark plug, dropped an extension down. So it's actually touching the piston. I'm going to set this guy at zero. Okay, so that's zero. And I'm going to turn the crank and watch this needle. So the piston is pushing on the extension. And the extension is pushing on the dial gauge. So either way, see it's uh, it's moving. Now I'm actually I'm I'm going clockwise on the crank bolt. Now I'm gonna go. I'm sorry. I was just going counterclockwise. Now I'm going clockwise. The needle is coming back. It's gonna hit zero. Stop for. I'm still turning, and it's going back again. So this way, you know that the piston is at its Tap that center. You see how it's moving. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. So right now I know it's a TDC. So I know for sure that these are as loose or as close as they get, and these rockers are as loose as they will get. Uh, the perfect setup is 0 0.008. Intake is 0 0.0098, which is 0 0.010. Which is like a just call it a 10 and an 8 on this. It's the same procedure adjusting valves and all that, but uh, just make sure it's on TDC. So, my mistake, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to put something on the screen to watch the video, you know, don't be adjusting these valves like I did. You know, watch the video till the end. Anyway, so I gotta re obviously, I'm going to readjust these with the dial gauge. Obviously, I can switch to number three, set this up, and you know, I can actually see if the exhaust valves are going to be closed or open in here and just, uh, you know, keep turning until the piston goes all the way up. And all of these, like the exhaust one on this one is loose. This intake one is, but not this one. So this one needs, re or, you know, piston needs to be adjusted at TDC. But if you're looking at the marks, you know, you got the timing cover still off. All you do is watching the crankshaft, crank sprocket mark, bring it to 180. Okay, turn it, turn 180 degrees, and then you're at uh, 
uh, firing order is one, three, two, four. Yeah. So the pistons are one, two, three, four, you know, top of the engine, one, two, three, four. That's how they are numbered. And then uh, the firing order is one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four. That's how it fires. So the next piston, once you turn it 180 degrees, this guy here, you check number three, then two, then four. And you just keep turning it by 180 degrees because it takes two turns for the crank to turn the camshaft one time. So two times, one time. So I got some work to do. Guys, I'm happy to report that I only had to adjust five valves total and they were all exactly one thousand of an inch um, off. Which means, uh, in re remember plus or minus uh, zero point zero one six is allowable, so they were all within range anyways. So now they're just perfect. So I guess maybe you can adjust the valves the way I did it uh, the first time around. One thousandth of an inch off is is allowable, therefore it, will, it would work. Alright, so now I am confident that this engine is ready to go in.